Um, so I'm thrilled to be here and talk about intellectual property perspective for the cannabis industry today. Right. So I'm going to share some insights about advertising cannabis and CBD products in Germany. And I also will talk about brand protection in Europe, which is really important for you. So let's start with the advertising. I will focus on, uh, I think, the most um, important products, which are medicinal products, cosmetics, and food. Let's start with the medicinal products. Um, cannabis or CBD containing drug is subject to prescription in Germany, as you surely know. So medicinal products subject to prescription may be advertised only among healthcare professionals. So um, it may not be advertised among um, consumers and consumers. However, if you do advertise it among healthcare professionals, you have to observe some, um, there are also some limits. Of course, misleading advertising is not permitted. I give you some examples um, where to, uh, under which it would be misleading. For example, if therapeutic effic efficacy or effects are attributed, which the medical products do not have, that would be not allowed. If the impression is falsely created, that success can be expected with certainty, of course, illegal. If false or deceptive statements are made about the composition, um, also not allowed. If you use expert opinions, um, which is often done, or testimonials, um, this must be scientific and properly cited. Um, if you do not comply with these rules, you face jail time, um, or at least you get a fine, and of course, your material will be confiscated. So, I think more, um, more problematic is uh, the food, food and dietary supplements. These are some examples I uh, made screenshots of uh, over the weekend when I did this presentation. These are all claims from German websites. Uh, there to CBD, it says CBD has been shown to inhibit the appetite cravings or CBD helps with pain, stress, sleep disorders or migraine. So the question is if these examples are allowed under German law. Again, um, you have to observe the, again, uh, the act against unfair competition. So in general, of course, unfair commercial practices are illegal. Um, a commercial practice shall be regarded as misleading if it, contain, if it contains false statements regarding the main characteristics. Now, what does that mean? Unfortunately, we do not have that much case law in Germany uh, on advertisement claims yet. We do have a lot of, uh, about regulatory questions. However, I found one example, a recent example from the court in Munich, there, too, it is unfair to advertise with a statement in a prominent place where to CBD uh, content is 10%. And it is only explained in the small print that the product actually only contains 10% contains CBD liquid. There's a, a big difference between that. And there, the court held that would be a misleading and false statement, just to give you one example. Um, talk about food and dietary supplements, of course you have to observe the EU health claim regulation. There too, the use of nutrition health claims shall not be false, ambiguous, or misleading. Nutrition and health claims shall be based on and substantiated by generally accepted scientific data. And at last, health claims shall be permitted unless they are included in a special list, which is part of that regulation. And unfortunately, until today, CBD is not included in that list. Therefore, specific claims linked to CBD, uh, linking CBD to health um, is not permitted for food. So avoid these health claims. I'm sorry to be a party pooper here, but at the moment, this is the law. So if your product is not a drug, you're not allowed to claim that it's beneficial for your health. Just to give you an example, 
how or which lar to which large extent the German courts say what um, a health claim is. So these are all examples from German cases. So if you claim your food keeps you young, that would be not allowed if your food contains CBD. Or if you, if you only say it, it has a health benefit, or it is good for the body, it's good for my organism, it strengthens the body's defenses, helps to overcome phases of weakness. So th this is actually not so bad, but <laughs> under German case law, uh, this would be a health claim. So the health claim regulation applies and as CBD products are not in the list of the health claims, that would be forbidden. Or uh, slim and fit, uh, there's another example, facilitate sleep, calm and gentle sleep, or body comes to rest, would be problematic. Right, um, my last, um, the last thing I would like to share with you about food, and that's um, specifically important for the German market, so you are a, manufactory, a manufacturer and uh, you, you claim that you, this is not a drug, it's, it's only a dietary supplement, let's say. Still, you advertise it as a drug. So from the overall get-up, the claims and the advertising you use, it looks like a medicinal product. In these cases, uh, the courts would say that it is a drug and then you have a problem because you didn't get drug approval in advance. So whenever, yeah, yeah, just watch out not <laughs> to, to make the presentation of your uh, product to look like too much as a medicinal product because then um, it could be held that it, it is actually a drug even though you did not plan that. And this is uh, specifically important for the German market. Right, um, the last uh, thing is the cosmetic products. Again, I made some, um, here are some examples from German websites I found. There too, it was claimed that uh, CBD products um, partic are particularly good against skin diseases. Um, scientists have investigated. CBD fights the cause of acne at its roots. Well, the question is whether this would be allowed under German law. So... Um, under uh, the cosmetic regulations, whatever you say, it has to be true, of course. So if it is claimed on the product that it contains a specific ingredient, the ingredient shall be deliberately present. Or uh, marketing communications shall not imply that expressions of opinions are verified claims unless the opinion reflects verifiable evidence. So you always need verifiable evidence when you make a, cos a claim for your cosmetic product. Further, you need evidential support. So claims for cosmetic products shall be supported by adequate and again verifiable evidence. Evidence for claim substantiation shall take into account state of the art practices and at last where studies are being used as evidence they shall be relevant to that product. So uh, just not using any, any um, evidence, it always have to be ex exactly for your product. Then you can use it. Okay, so that was uh, in the limited amount of time, a really narrow uh, insights uh, about the strict rules of advertising in the cannabis field until today. Um, at last, I would like to share some Thoughts about brand protection. I'm handling trademarks uh, for the cannabis industry since 2017, obviously, in Germany. And uh, I brought you some recent case law about cannabis trademarks. So that, that one is um, a quite important one from the European Court of Justice, the cannabis store Amsterdam. Unfortunately, it was rejected. Uh, the European Court stated that this would be contrary to public policy or to accepted principles of morality. Uh, yeah, I find it quite astonishing. I think it's a beautiful trademark, but somehow the courts saw it differently. They acknowledge that the cannabis consumption is uh, generally legal in the Netherlands, however, 
uh, violation of the public order in other EU countries would be sufficient for the rejection of the mark. So, and that was a starting point for many more trademark uh, decisions we had afterwards with terms of uh, yeah, some um, for, for cannabis products. Like this one, it's quite recent, a decision from the Board of the Appeal of the European Trademark Office. Again, it says it uh, is contrary to the public policy. The marks conveyed a message related to the consumption of prohibited and harmful substances and therefore were rejected. Also, this one, which is, I think, not so drastic, but still it was um, rejected, the well weed. Um, here, this is in quite interesting because the applicant cited the ruling of the European of um, the European Court of Justice from November last year. There too, as you probably all know, the cannabidiol was held is uh, legal for um, um, yeah for bringing over the uh, over from France, I think, to Germany. It was held uh, that this cannot be stopped. It may be freely marketed, so they held that um, hemp is actually legal. So the applicant argued, how can you ar how can you say this infringes public policy? Well, um, the opinion of the board was not changed, so they, they, uh, the, the mark got rejected, unfortunately. All these on the left side um, are certain types of cannabis. All these were rejected because, again, contrary to the public policy and the principles of morality, also Bavaria wheat and the hemp fest. Right, so, um, yeah, you see, despite the greater tolerance toward the consumption of marijuana within the EU, it, uh, it's, still, it's still problematic. So, until today, I would advise my clients not to use words like marijuana, cannabis, hemp, grass, pot, wheat, hush, or anything like that, so, because you probably get a rejection. Um, right, and at last, we also have uh, purely descriptive trademarks, these are some examples. Cheese is also a type of cannabis. Know your cannabis, the court said, well, that only says, well, you know what is in your product, so it's purely descriptive. And whenever you have a purely descriptive trademark, you cannot monopolize it and you cannot register it. The same happened to just CBD, Canna Farm, Midi Hemp. Uh, Ease was also one I handled and lost, unfortunately, uh, because the court said, well, it was not the court, it was the Board of Appeal of the European Trademark Office. They held, well, this only tells the consumer what the CBD in the product makes to your body. Uh, it releases, and so it's purely descriptive and not legible for trademark protection. Right, thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> Okay, sure. All right, you can be first. Um, may I go back to the the, uh, the trademark you for the Dutch yes. for the Dutch one, the cannabis? Um, could it be a solution that you first uh, put it in the Benelux? Um, uh, how do you call trademarks, and then maybe afterwards go to the European? I remember that that was like a trick many, many years ago. If, if whenever you, because I'm from Germany and the German patent office was really strict. So what we did, we advised our clients, go to the Benelux and then you file an international trademark and then nobody really looks anymore what, what happened there. But I don't think this still works actually. <laughs> because when you, your, your idea is we go to the Benelux, you probably get it because they are very, easy to get trademarks still, what I heard. Then you file an international trademark based on, the, on that mark, but then this application goes to the specific trademark offices where you apply for, let's say Germany, US, or the European Union. And there is an examiner, and he or she will examine the trademark under their law. So I don't think that this will help you just because you have the Benelux mark. The German examiner will still say, well, here in Germany, you don't get the trademark protection. Did I answer your question? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, madam, 
hello. I have a question related to cosmetics, CBD cosmetics. So if you in a brochure or whatever, which you hand out, maybe not to the patients, but to the uh, pharmacists. So mm. if you, uh, for example, state uh, uh, an oil, a cream, which you put on your derm, is possible or can be anti-inflammatory? Also can Entzündungshemmend work? And how about that? Yeah, that's a borderline case. You just have to, whenever you make claims like that, can be anti-inflammatory, you actually need evidence for that. You cannot just say something if you there's can't say no evidence. It may be anti-inflammatory. <laughs> people have reported that it's, a, some people yeah, say. I get it, I get it. And you know, what, what is possible, and I see that on websites, I see that at clients, they say there are a lot of research done yet. Still, we are at the beginning. We cannot say for 100% sure, but we see the trend goes there. So that would be possible. You know, just to be honest, to say where we are right now. And I think, actually, I, I, me as a consumer, from a consumer side, I would be, feel more confident with that. Just, you know, promise something which you don't really, maybe cannot until now. In really. America, there's always a little asterisk and then very small print. This has not been proven by the FDA or blah, 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 blah. <laughs> We're probably lying, but we're doing our best. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good solution. <laughs> so many thanks for the nice uh, insights. And I have um, to elaborate with the topic claims. So... You can make claims as soon as they are supported by verifiable data. You mentioned that. But how does the law define verifiable data? As a scientist, I guess that's scientific data. But even within scientific literature, there are different levels of evidence. For example, the use of CBD as anti-acne is, is published uh, in the cell model. So this preclinical data. It's still, and we know which uh, biochemical mechanism makes this possible. So it is a fact in science. So can you use this claim? Or do they, the law means uh, randomized clinical trial, placebo control? So this yes. preclinical data. No, it's a I double cannot... blind randomized study you need. Okay, because for that, uh, there are only four applications of cannabis which are actually have this kind of a study. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you go beyond these four applications, you cannot use preclinical data, I mean, it's, if it's published in nature or science or why not. Yeah, it, right? it, it's, um, yeah it, there's a great risk <laughs> that it would be illegal, absolutely. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so and you need patient yeah, data, no cell data, no, if, no if mind If you data. use it, you just have to make clear that this is a not randomized, double, oh. etc. study. Ah, okay. So you could use it and be clear that this is based on this level of evidence in science. Okay, because yeah. it brings me to my second question, which is, I mean, you give many examples regarding food, for instance, what you cannot write. Health so, claims, uh -huh, yes. Health claims, yeah. So what we will be an example of what you can actually write. If you, at least one example, uh, just to have the context. I mean, it's very clear what you cannot write, but what well, could you write? Well, we have like um, probably, but this is you know, <laughs> this is very specific, and of course, but uh, but the, we do have case law where the courts say that might be okay to say bekömmlich, which is in in English good for your. Uh, what is it in English? Like yeah. <laughs> the guts, digestive, digestive. So, so there are some expressions where they say, well, actually, this, this doesn't really refer to the health. So it's always about if you, if you say you feel really better, it makes an influence on your body, then it's a health claim. But the, yeah, as I said, this is um, a very difficult question, a difficult matter, and it's from um, case to case. We have to to evaluate it. All so right, all right. No, it's not an easy one to just yeah, answer. Of course. So if, I, if my anti-acne cream, CBD cream, it says, okay, this can help you address acne with the asterisk based on preclinical data uh, that you can find in this scientific journal, I might get away with that or? She's going to have to start charging you. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Why don't we have a chat outside and uh, we make her <laughs> a special deal? <laughs> we have one more over here. <laughs> Hi. Uh, let's say my wettest dream comes true and cannabis becomes uh, fully legalized and we have a regulated market here in Germany on a EU member state level. What does it mean for this topic on an EU level? Yeah, it would be a big change for... I mean, then 
it would, I guess, it would not take long until it's included in the list of, for the um, um, admitted health claims. And then you can actually claim that your food is beneficial for your health, which you, until now, I mean, you, you're not even allowed in Germany to bring it on the market in the first place. And not, <laughs> we're not talking about advertisement, but if we, as you said, if we, in, if we are in the future and we can do that, and then I guess we, you have to wait until it's also in the list of the health claims, and then you can use beneficial health claims for the food. So that, that would make a difference. I'd like to expand on the question before that. So would you think that uh, for health claims it would uh, need to test the product specifically for health benefits instead of the isolated uh, compound? You mean what is the procedure to get accepted in that list? Yes. Uh, can, you, can you take results from uh, science and uh, look at the isolated uh, product? Or would you need to take your, uh, your product that contains CBD to test for these health claims? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm an appeal lawyer, not so much regulatory. I don't, I don't agree with the regulatory issues that does a colleagues of me. So I don't know how you actually get the, how the procedure works to get uh, registered as a health claim, as an admitted health claim. So I don't want to answer that because I don't really know how, how, what exactly you need to do if it's the ingredient or the product. I guess it's the ingredient. Yeah. That was wonderful and perfect. And thank you for taking time to answer the questions. One more time for Margaret Knitter from SKW Schwartz.